Hi, welcome to product review and test by Robojax. In this video, I'm going to test this AC with an input of 80 to 265 volts and output of 24 volts, which is an industry standard. We're going to test it for 20 minutes with an input of 120 volts and then again another 20 minutes with an input of 240 volts going to use thermal camera to see which area of the module gets hot the most and we are going to test it with different currents and see how what is the maximum current that this can handle and how long uh, this can handle the test let's get started with this uh, I will have separate video explaining how this functions I'm gonna test it and see every uh, every section of this from AC converting to DC and then control system and then DC regulated voltage of 24 volts at the output. The item is sold on eBay around nine dollars US, 11.86 Canadian. And unfortunately, they don't have a model number. They always mention the input and output, 85 to 265 volts, which covers all AC voltage around the world. And here is the, the catch. 4 to 6 ampere, this is a huge difference, 2 ampere difference, but at 24 volts output. One industrial application which needs 24 volts, supplying the power from AC is a little hassle and you need to have some kind of converter or adapter. This is an adapter or power converter that receives AC here and it works everywhere around the world from 85 volts to 265 volts AC and the output is DC 24 volts. If they've labeled this as 4 to 6 ampere, we're going to test and see how much current this can handle and we will leave it for a longer period of time to see uh, if it can withstand the same load for a longer period. And I'm going to explain all the components of this and I'll try to give you as much as information as possible. Let me now explain the module. The module has an input terminal, these two you will press this and the clip will open and then hold it. Now it's very tight and secure. To remove it, just press this and remove. We have these two terminals for the AC, which can be 85 volts up to 260 volts, depending on your region. So it can be 120 to 20 to 40. And then it goes through the uh, fuse and capacitor and then an inductor. And then we have here a bridge rectifier. There is a thermistor here. We have an NTC thermistor, negative temperature coefficient. We have this MOSFET, which is driving the primary winding of this uh, choke inductor here uh, using this uh, chip here, CR6842. CR6842. Uh, pulse width modulation controller with frequency jitter, 8 pin, and the then pin 8 is connected to the MOSFET which is driving the winding and then also from the winding it, it receives power uh, of 15 volts and it detects also the current from the source of this resistor. The feedback control is used from uh, the output stage using the optocoupler through this and this adjusts the duty cycles so the output voltage is always stable. And then the, the other uh, secondary side of this one, the secondary side is being rectified with this rectifier that's handling one with this inductor uh, to eliminate all those noise and the output is connected here. MOSFET that is used here is this is the 20N 60C3 and this is the MOSFET 20N 60C the package that is used is this one and as you can see it works with 650 volts the drain source voltage and the drain current is 20 ampere of course we are using very little current it's just utilizing the high voltage handling of this MOSFET I will provide you the link and then the output stage has this and this is the diode that is used 2100 CT and it has two diodes in one this is anode 1 and 3 anode is here anode is here and the cathodes are connected at the middle which is pin 2 and pin 4 the body 
they can handle each 10 amperes total will be 20 but in our case they have been used in parallel and only uh, passing around 4 amperes length of this module is 106.1 millimeter the width is 56.9 57 millimeter the height of the module is 28.8 millimeter if you're concerned with weight it weighs 139.4 grams this is the AC I'm gonna connect it to the power line and we are getting 24 volts Here is the wiring, I'm in Canada and uh, the input is here at 120 volts AC and right now it's not connected and this is the 24 volts DC output which I'm going to connect it to the load. This is the electronic load DL3031 and these are the two terminals that from the circuit will be connected in here and we will see the voltage here and the current. I'm connecting the AC power and the output is as you can see the light is on and we can see here the output voltage and according to specs it's a 4 to 6 vo um, ampere let's just put 4 now it's 4 amp I'm gonna turn it on Four ampere is being drawn from this. Let me show you the virtual. So four ampere is drawn. The device is very cool. Set it at ten minutes. One minute has passed. This is the nine more minutes. Let's change it to 5 Ampere As you can see as soon as I set it 5 it turned off because it cannot handle Now I'm in 4 It can handle 4 but when I change it to 5 it shut off Now let's try it another 10 minutes because this seems to be getting a little hotter. okay so 20 minutes of continuous 4 ampere current the device is just above warm so as you can see I, I can hold my finger this many seconds now I have to remove it because it hurts now this is now I have here a power supply that is supplying 240 volts so let's test this with 240 volts I'm showing you the voltage here 245 volts and let's turn this on 4 ampere is drawn now from this device I've set this for 20 minutes and we will see how this handles the 20 minutes. So 50 degrees around here, 60 degrees 
it shows around here that's the hottest point and we are now at almost two minutes Let's increase the current to 5 amp if it can work. Now we are at 5 amp and let's go to 6 ampere. No, as you can see 6 ampere doesn't work but 5 ampere works. Almost 19 minutes have passed and the hot spot is the rectifier 70 degrees you see 73 degrees that's the hot spot okay 20 minutes has passed let me stop that For conclusion that we say that this inverter, this 24 volts power supply uh, can supply 24 volts, 4 ampere at 120 volts and 24 volts, 5 ampere at 220, 240 volts in Asia and Europe. And for 20 minutes continuous testing, it was able to handle that current either in North America with 120 volts input or 240 volts input of Asian voltage. So definitely this is a very nice well designed product and it's worth getting it. Thank you for watching this was test and review of this module. Uh, if you like this video and learn from it please thumb up. If you have comment or question please post it at the comment section below. I try to answer and reply and I appreciate it. Please subscribe so you can get updates of my upcoming videos and also I will have another video explaining functionality of this if you are interested in uh, electronic circuit and power electronic. And those are the temperature that you can see at any point of this that I can show you at the end. That is very cool. 40 degrees